hello, 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 welcome. Welcome to our All Age Worship at Callington Cluster. We hope you really enjoyed this service. Uh, what are we learning about today, Steve? Um, we're learning about all sorts of stuff, like um, um, things like obedience. Obedience, oh my goodness, that is a really long so word. do as I tell you. Oh, okay. Do as I tell well, or you, do, you do, I do as you tell me. Okay. But well, one of us, there's three of us in the room. Because <laughs> there's me, I'm Steve, and that's... I'm Amy. And there's a bump there as well, oh, there which is. is Amy's baby. So the three of us are going to present for you today. <laughs> so hello and welcome. And it's all about obedience and being told to do things and obeying them. And that's what we're, we're asking um, you to think about today, because that's what God asks us to do, is to obey him and to um, do the things he tells us to do for our own good. Yes. Should we do a, a game or something to illustrate that? Yes, I think we should. So we're going to play a game called Amy Says. This is a variation of Simon Says, but because it's me, I am vain, I like my name, so... We could, we could change your name to Simon. We could change my name to Simon, but I prefer wouldn't be, Amy. Wouldn't be appropriate, would it? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> right, so you can play along too. So um, the rules of the game is when I say Amy Says, you copy Steve. But when I say... When I say I, I say an action, and then you're going to do it, and so are the children. Oh, I mean. oh right. So, um, but if I just say do an action, and I don't say Amy says, then you don't do that action. So it's all a bit of a listening game. Are you ready? Am I going to get this right? Am I going to get this right? I don't know, but there is a bar of chocolate in it for you if if you <sighs> win. Okay. So, are you guys ready at home to play? Brilliant. Okay. Right. Amy says, put your hands on your head. Amy says, put your hands on your face. Amy says, put your hands on your knees. Amy says, put your hands on your chest. Put your hands on your shoulders. Oh! No, no, no. <laughs> did you put your hands on your shoulders? Oh, well, Steve did. Oh, silly Steve. Right, let's try again. That was a trial run, okay? This is for winning the bar of chocolate. My heart's ready? going. My heart's going. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> right, are you ready? Yes. Okay, are you guys ready at home? Brilliant, okay. Amy says, uh, blow a raspberry. <laughs> Amy says, cross your arms. Amy says, put your hands on your shoulders. Amy says, put your hands on your ears. Amy says, put your hands on your eyes. Put your hands on your mouth. Oh! No! <laughs> Every time! I get you every single time. You won't get me this time, I promise you right, that. Right, okay, we'll try one more time, okay? Are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. No, what do you mean no? <laughs> that one there isn't ready, look. Come on, Come get on. ready. Get ready, right. you ready? Let's go. Right, Amy says, clap your hands. Amy says, put your hands on your chest. You haven't told me to stop yet. Oh, I told you to put your hands on your chest. Oh, right, okay, right. Oh, my goodness, he's terrible. Amy says, put your hands on your head. Amy says, nod your head. Amy says, stop nodding your head. Amy says, put your hands on your shoulders. Amy says, put your hands on your tummy. Amy says, put your hands on your eyes. Amy says, put your hands on your ears. Put your hands on your mouth. <gasps> Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> You won! You did it! Oh, I did it! I couldn't hear her! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my hands on my ears, I couldn't hear her. There you go. So that was, Amy says, that was a good lesson in obedience. You you didn't listen very well to begin with. <laughs> you can have my chocolate. You can have your chocolate. I'm going to get you your chocolate. So um, we are going to open in prayer now. So um, we're going to um, say a quick prayer just to say um, thank you, sorry, and please. Okay, so this is our teaspoon prayer. Are you ready to pray with me? Yes. Okay. Right, so whenever we start a service, it's always good to get rid of all the rubbish that has happened in the week, to always say sorry for the things we've done wrong. But it's also important to be grateful to God for all the amazing things he's done in our lives. So we're going to say thank you, and we're going to say sorry, and we're going to think of something as well that we might need right now in our lives. So we're also going to say please. So what I want you to do right now is to grab a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to write down one thing to say say thank you to God for, one thing to say sorry to God for, and one thing to say please. So write T-S-P. So thank you, sorry, and please. Right, are you going to do that as well? Mm -hmm. I can right. do that too. Okay. T-S-P. T-S-P. Thank you, sorry, 
And please, TSP. Got it. Good. Very good. Right. You write that down. Have a quick pause this video and write that down now. Do, 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 Are we doing? Are we doing? Do, 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 That's doing. Right. Have you written down your things? Brilliant. Okay. Right. So, Steve, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for this house that I'm living in now. It's a really comfortable, nice house, and I know lots of people haven't got a nice house to live in. That's very true. I am thankful for my baby, who is coming in a couple of months' time. Oh, yes. Oh. And then nobody will sleep. <laughs> Except <Yeah>. the baby. <laughs> Can you think of something that we might be sorry for? I'm sorry for eating all the chocolates. Oh, that one's a good one. I I'm, I'm sorry for shouting at my dogs, because sometimes they're naughty and I shout at them, and I probably shouldn't shout at them, I should probably just tell them not to do what they're doing. Uh, can you think of something that you'd like to say please for? I'd like to say please to help the people in the world who haven't got a lot of things at the moment, lot, no, no money or, or no home to live in, or people who are ill at the moment, and there's lots of people ill aren't there in the country at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. And I would like to say, please, um, that God will help all of those who are working in our hospitals, in our doctors, um, in our community clinics, and all the medical professionals out there, all the doctors and nurses who are looking after us and keeping us healthy. So um, we're going to now pray together. Okay, so um, I want you to close your eyes and put your hands together so you're not distracted. And I want you to think about the things that you've said thank you, sorry, and please for, okay? Right, now we're going to pray. Father God, thank you for all of the amazing things you do in our lives. And I bring before you all the things that we are grateful for that everyone has written down or thought of. We're sorry for all the bad things that we do, all the naughty things that we really shouldn't do, things that make you sad, things that make you um, want us to do better, and we hope that you help us to um, make those things better, and please clean them from our um, bodies and make us brand new again, Lord. And I pray that um, for all the things that we're saying please for, that you will um, do those things in your precious, precious name. Amen. Amen. Do you know what amen means? What does that mean? It means I agree. I agree. Do you agree? I agree. Do you agree? I agree. I agree. Okay. What are we agreeing about? Oh, everything we've just said. Oh, everything we've just said. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, everything that was said in the prayer, we agree. We agree. Amen. 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 So now we're going to go into our story for today. Are you ready? Make sure you sit in comfortably because this is going to be really fun to watch. Okay, right. We're going to tell the story of Jonah and the whale. Now this is the story about a man called Jonah. Now Jonah was a prophet and What's this? <laughs> not, not that kind of prophet. I'm, well, I'll, I'll keep it anyway, sweeties, later. And this was a story about Jonah, and he's a prophet of a kind who talks to God, and God talked to him as well. And now Jonah heard a message from God. Oh, what's this? And, and I'll, I'll deal with that later on, okay? And I'll, I'll, that, not that kind of message. It was a message in his head. He heard God talking to him, and he heard God saying, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh. And ni that's Nivea. Um, no, that, that's, that's, that's men's care products. Shoja. Other brands are available. No, not Nivea. Nineveh. Nineveh. Say Nineveh. So he went to this city of... He was asked to go to the city of Nineveh. Now, the city of Nineveh was very, very big. But it was also very, very naughty. There were lots of naughty people there. And God said to him, If you go to the city of Nineveh... And he gave him a sign. And the, and, and the sign said, Go to Nineveh. So he, he said, I, I don't want to go to Nineveh. It's full of naughty people. But God said, if you don't go to Nineveh, that city is going to be destroyed and all the people in it are going to die and they won't have their dinner. Even all the fish and chip shops will be destroyed. There'll be nothing left of Nineveh if you don't go and warn them 
that a catastrophe is coming unless they stop doing all the naughty things. And, and, and Jonah said, what kind of naughty things are they doing there? And God said, they're doing all sorts of naughty things. They're stealing underpants off the washing lines. They're, 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 they're talking rude things to naughty, you know, to, or they're doing all sorts of horrible things in Nineveh. And you've really got to go there and tell them to stop doing it. Otherwise, it will be destroyed. And Jonah thought, he thought, he, he thought, he thought for a bit and he thought, I don't want to go to Nineveh. It's a horrible, stinky place. I'd rather go to Tavistock or even Gunnis Lake. I'd rather go anywhere than Nineveh. Do you know what he did? He said, I'm going to run away. So he started to run in the opposite direction to Nineveh. He started to run down towards the sea and he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. Then he ran some more and he kept running and he kept running. But call himself a prophet, doesn't he know that God is everywhere and God can run faster? Well, no, you know, Jonah didn't think about that, did he? So, he gets to the place where the beaches are and where the docks are and he sees these fishing boats and he goes down to the nearest fishing boat and he says to the man in charge of the fishing boat, the captain, says, I'd like to get on board please and go as far away from here as possible. So the captain lets him on board. And he goes down inside the ship and he goes to sleep and the ship sails out of the harbour and into the deep sea. And then they run into trouble. They run into serious trouble because the weather starts to go bad and the weather starts to get up and all the sea starts to foam and all the waves start to foam and all the clouds darken and all the lightning flashes and all the thunder sounds and then the spray comes up all over him in the... <coughs> the spray comes up all over him in the... <coughs> Can you stop doing that? <coughs> and the spray comes up all over him and then and then the wind starts to rise up, the wind starts to blow, and the wind gets stronger and stronger, and the boat's starting to go up in the air, and the wind's getting... I, stop, stop, can you stop that hairdryer, please? I can't even hear myself think. Sorry. And the wind is getting faster and faster and faster, and then the waves come up over the top of the ship, and the ship... The ship starts to sink and it's going down fast and the captain calls all the men on board and he calls Jonah up from the bottom of the boat and says, Jonah, don't you care about this ship? The ship is sinking. We need to pray to every God that there is. And Jonah said, well, there's only one God. There's only one God and that's the God that I serve. And the captain said, well, in that case, you'd better, you'd better pray to your God and then it hit him. It hit. What was that? It hit him. And it said, Jonah, you've disobeyed me. You've run away from me. And now you're all wet and you're all covered in all sorts of rubbish. And now, because you disobeyed me and ran away, you're in trouble. And all those who are around you are also in trouble because you disobeyed me. You didn't do what? I told you to do. So Jonah realises that he's the cause of the trouble. And he says to the men in the fishing boat, throw me over the side of the boat. And the men go, what? Get out of town. He said, I already did. I already did get out of town. And that's the reason I'm here. I should have gone to the town instead. So the fishermen say, we can't throw you over the side. You'll drown. And Jonah said, well, you'll have to do that because I'm the cause of all the trouble. And so at the end they throw him over the side and he goes over the side of the ship into the water that's good and he goes into the water and then the storm stops and everyone's saved except Jonah because now Jonah's the only one that's left in deep water isn't he literally and Jonah looks around and he thinks I'm going to drown in this sea but then God saves him because God sends along a great big, massive great big fish. And the fish swallows Jonah up. Now Jonah is inside the belly of the... He's, in, he's inside the belly of the big fish. It really smells of fish in here. Sorry about... Fish. 
Yeah, that's why it's smelling. It's it's really horrible in here. I want to do this quick so I can get out because this is stinking inside this belly of this fish in here. And he was inside the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, and he had a lot of time to think inside the belly of the fish. And he was covered in all sorts of horrible things like stinky, stinky old fish guts and uh, scales and bits of branches and old toilet seats and rubber tires and oil and all, all stuff. Can you, can you stop? I can't, I can't work like this. And he's inside the belly of this fish for all that time and he's got lots of time to think and while he's inside that belly of that fish, God says to him, I want you to go and do what I told you to do. You've run away from me but you can't run away from me and you can't hide from me because I'm God and I'm everywhere. And I know what's best, so I want you to go back and I will save you from the belly of this fish if you tell, if you do what I tell you to do. And so Jonah said, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to get out of this fish. I've been here long enough and I don't like the smell of fish anymore and I'm looking awful. I'm covered in guts and I'm covered in horrible things and I want to get outside and get back onto land again. So Jonah, in the whale, inside the fish, he says, to God, I will do what you tell me to do. And God causes the fish to spit him out onto the land again. So Jonah was now on the land again. And he was in an awful state. And someone came up to him and said, Jonah, you're in an awful state. And Jonah said, I know it was the way I was brought up. But anyway, he went to Nineveh. He walked all the way to Nineveh in that horrible state and the people watched him and they're coming and they ran away from him because he looked horrible. He was covered in fish guts and he was covered in all sorts of rubbish and he was bleached from the sand and the sea and the sun. And when he got to Nineveh, all the people were afraid of him and they stopped and they listened and they said to him, what are you doing here? And Jonah said to them, I've come to tell you that if you don't stop all the naughty things you're doing like stealing underpants off washing lines and being rude to old ladies then God says that city is, is going to be destroyed and so all the people stopped what they were doing immediately they stopped being naughty and they all said sorry to God and then Jonah went away and that's the end of the story but the moral of the story is this God is everywhere you can never run or hide from him and you must always do what God tells you to do. Every single time. Bye. Can I get cleaned up now? <laughs> yes.
praise my heart will sing how great is our God in Psalms 128 verse 1 it says that blessed are those who fear the Lord who walk in obedience with him. And that means that when we um, follow what God says and when we talk to him all the time in prayer and um, by reading the Bible, that means that um, God really loves that about us and he wants us to keep doing that. And it means that good things will happen and it means that when we are obedient to him, then uh, we won't get ourselves into trouble. Uh, like Jonah did, Jonah got himself into trouble because he was not obedient. So it's very important to be obedient to God and do exactly what he says. So now we're going to pray that we can do that. So let's um, close our eyes and focus completely on God. Imagine God is stood right in front of you as a person so that we can talk to him now. So Father God, I thank you for um, your messages that you send us and the things that you say to us, whether that is when we're um, praying or whether we are reading our Bibles. And I pray that each and every single one of us remembers to be obedient, remembers to follow what you say and not run away from you and not turn away from you. I pray for each and every person who is watching this video right now that you will just bless them in the weeks to come and that they will just feel so loved by you. In your precious name, Amen. So if you'd like to join us for our next um, video, we're going to do another All Age service next week and um, catch up with us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube um, whenever you can. It's been lovely to spend some time with you and I shall see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>